What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from iGeometry, where we discuss software engineering by example. Today's topic is Git. Git or GitHub is a, is a source control uh, tool that allows you to control your source code. It's it's really cool tool for developers, and I wish I discovered that uh, very early in my development life, where uh, I write a lot of code, and I'm sure you do too as, as a software engineer, right? And if you want to show your code to someone, you'll have to send them some sort of an email or attachment or Google Drive or Dropbox with your source code, which, which is uh, not ideal, especially if your code contains some files and those files are not safe to send over the wire and all this kind of jazz, right? So, so uh, get here. Is a, is a very nice tool that allows you to do that. So let's get to work. Let's show you Git by example. So we, today in this episode, we will go quickly through how to create a, uh, a Git repository, which is your essentially your project, how to push code to master, and how to clone a repo, and very simple, very basic things. In the coming episode, we'll get to discuss branches and submodules and more cool things so let's start with a very basic to allow you to get started with git <laughs> all right guys so first of all uh, i want you to go to github.com and create an account for you it's free just go ahead and create an account so get that ready while this is cooking you know you can put in some information about yourself there the second is decide if you're using windows Download uh, or Mac depends uh, uh, which which version of operating system you're using on Linux. You can you have to download the command line and in my opinion that is the best way to learn Git is to do it all through the command line. Uh, there are tools that does that, but uh, sometimes those tools have shortcomings and they don't like you 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 run into trouble. So you have to learn the command line. As I learned this a hard way. <laughs> So you know, the interface, the user interfaces are beautiful, but sometimes those will have limits and you will get stuck. So if you don't know the command lines, uh, you'll get into trouble, right? So, so it's good to know the basic command lines here. So let's go ahead and download Git. I'm using Mac here, so I'm gonna. Uh, I I already have it downloaded. So just download and install that, right? So and all our work will be. Uh, through the command line right? so I'm gonna use the terminal window which is here all right cool guys and for the code for simple code that I'm gonna write it I'm gonna use Visual Studio code so three pieces of thing you can use notepad right it's just anything that you need to write code all right guys so I'm going to write a simple HTML page let's say this is my project like a small project with a few JavaScript files maybe right so this to start with Git, this is my preferred approach, is to always create a repo first, right? So you go ahead and create a repo. So what, this is the, your interface, right? This is the profile. You go ahead and create a new repository. And let's call this Git by example, right? You can give it some information, right? Git by example, description, uh, explaining explaining get by example right and you can go ahead and initialize in uh, this repository with readme file I'm not gonna do that now uh, I'll tell you later but you can just create it blank if you created with a readme file it's okay as well but let's go ahead and create a simple blank uh, repo right just like that and when we have that, what are we going to do is we will actually follow these commands, right? But we'll do it in a different way, kind of, right? So remember this? You, you, do you see this HTTPS get link? This is everything we need to start with. So let's go back to our terminal window here. And when I like to work with Git, I like to think about folders. So your folder is essentially your project, right? Think about it this way. So what we want to do here is we, you probably have some code already 
in place and you decided to start the repo, I prefer to start fresh from a, a clean folder, right? This way you don't get into an, any trouble. So let's go ahead and copy that uh, link and then you go here and let's pick up a nice folder that we go in. Web apps, I have a web app folder, right? What we're gonna do, I have two folders here and what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone that repo. That by itself will actually create a folder with necessary information in it, right? So let's go ahead, see, get by example. All right, so since I already have done this before, I, I connected to Git, uh, it didn't prompt you for my username and password. In your case, you might be prompted with your username and password, so you just put it there, GitHub username and password. Very simple, so just like that, I have Git by example. The folder looks empty, but there are some files there. Let's get to work. I'm gonna write my first uh, file here. So let's go ahead and open a folder and we where did I put that in? Web apps, get by example, open. And just like that, I opened that folder. That's another thing I like with Visual Studio Code because it allows you to open folders and you work with these folders instead of individual files. Does that make sense? Your folder is the project, essentially. So let's go ahead and create our first file here. And let's call it index.html. And I like the Visual Studio Code because it gives you a lot of boilerplate code, right? So you can write HTML5 and you hit tab and it will essentially spit out all the HTML5 requirements, right? And yeah, what do we have? What do we put here? Uh, just some hello world stuff, right? And maybe a script, All right? A script tag. Yeah, alert, get by example. So you write your code, right? So, and control S to save it. Cool, so I have the code. I think I'm happy. Uh, I need to start pushing this code to my GitHub repo. So how can I do that, right? So we established the basic principles. This is really cool. So what, you, what we need to do is to go back to our terminal here. And what do we have? We have an index of the HTML that is fancy. So we're gonna write these commands, right? And some of these commands, we're gonna write them only once because this is our first commit. A commit is a basically a, a unit of work, right? A bunch of add, bunch of remove, bunch of changes. So all of these are tracked by GitHub and you can change these and make these changes and push them as a one single unit of work, which is called a commit. So let's go ahead and try to commit. Right, uh, my first comment, index.html, and we get an error, right? Initial commit, it says uh, untracked files. What does that mean? So untracked files are, hey, you make some changes, and I notice that you make some changes, but you have to tell me whether you want to include these changes in your commit or not. So, and in this change, it'll beautifully detect that index.html was changed. Right, this is a new to me. I never seen this before. So what we need to do is basically git add that command, the git add. Right, so you're always gonna do this. Add and then star. In my case, I really don't have any files that I don't want to include. I want to include everything. So that's the easiest thing here. Sometimes you only want to include one file, which is in this case you do index.html, right? But most of the time, I mean, 99%, I include everything, right? Except there are single files that bin or uh, things, binaries that I don't want to include, but which is another thing we're going to eh, discuss in coming episodes. But yeah, git add star. And it will say, cool, git added. I think I, I added that to your 
local repository. Now we will try to commit these changes. My first comment index.html and it says one file, 17 inserted, and current create mode because this is like a new file and all that beautiful stuff, right? So now we need to do a push, right? Usually you, this will suffice, but the, since this is the first comment, you'll have to specify the origin, right? Which is this machine and that target, which is master. That's the default branch, by the way. For every GitHub repo, there's always that like a master uh, branch, right? So in this case, I'm pushing to master directly. This is my repo. I don't have other people working with me yet, but yeah. So just like that, we make a change and it's set and that's it. So you see the last line, it says, branch master set up to track remote branches master from origin so now if i go here and refresh what do i see sir come on get come on get don't do this to me my first commit index.html they click here look at that everything is green because green is addition basically if you see red that means it's a removal and that's a beautiful little view that allows you to see these changes. Comet, I have one comet, all these kind of setup branch, you have one branch which is master. So let's go ahead and make more changes. How about that guys, huh? Let's more some make some more changes. Let array, let's say we try to do an array here. Oh wait, we're writing outside the script. <laughs> That's why it doesn't have like all right so push uh, Hello, push word and save, right? So we added a couple of extra lines, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do get comment dash m, which is the title of that comment. And my second comment, I made some more changes, right? And what? It's getting an error, why? Because Guess what? Git is like that. You make some changes, you have to tell me if you want to include them or not. So, git add star. And then you do a git command my second. Add. And just like that, git commit. Now still, by this we did no, we will not see it, right? Commit doesn't mean pushing to the remote repo, right? Look at that. Still not there. So what, what do we need to do? The last step is git push. And now this time the beautiful part is I don't have to set that origin and master stuff. It remembers, right? There is a single file that is hidden and has all these uh, uh, jargon in it, right? So just like that, if I refresh my second comment, I made some more changes. Look at that, guys. Look at that. That is beautiful, all right? So you can do anything here, right? So let's create another file here. Touch is, by the way, created another file. Let's go let uh, let.js, right? And then does it show in Visual Studio? Oh, about that, guys. That is so cool. Let's create a function called test. And then it returns literally uh, test plus one, right? And yeah, go back to the comment. Now if I do get commit, uh, third commit, more changes. Look at that. It detects that, hey, you didn't make any changes to index.html, but there's a new file. Do you want me to add it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Now push that. Push, see? Add, commit, push. Add, commit, push. And just like that, you are pushing your stuff. Look at that, lib.js. So that's how you work with basically Git. This is like a basic, basic, basic thing if you have your own repo, right? But in the next episode, in the, in the coming episodes, we'll discuss uh, things like 
uh, pull and submodules and branches and usually if there's like multiple user working on the same repo you don't you guys don't push to the master you push you push to you push <laughs> sorry you push to branches and branches create pull request and they get approved and all these jazz right we're gonna discuss all that so I like to start small clean simple right so this is like if you have your own project and I I have like 80% of my project are like they're my own right so I push directly to master I trust my changes right uh, so yeah guys what do you think this is the first episode let me know if you want more of this stuff uh, I'll definitely make them uh, subscribe to this channel more software engineering by example we have we discussed software engineering topic databases cool stuff check out their other content in this channel hope you like this episode and i'm gonna see you in the next one goodbye